Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Lockdown Podcast with me, Sonny. And today's guest is also from the band. His name is Billy Fuller. How are you doing, Billy? I'm um, very well, thank you. Very good. Nice to uh, see your face. Yeah, see your man. Voice. I know it's been a while, man. I miss everyone so much. Yeah, no, this, this is good though. I like this. Yeah, I thought, I thought, why not? I thought it's. I want to be active in the community still. I think it gives other people like a chance to kind of get out and talk and obviously keep us active in an inactive situation. Really, like I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. How are you doing yeah. anyway? How are you dealing with the lockdown? Just dealing with it, man. Like. I mean, it's not as a bigger change for me because I'm still at work, aren't I? So mm. I'm still getting up each day kind of work, key worker out here. Well, yeah, and, I mean, uh, yeah, you are. You are a key worker. <laughs> I'm a key worker. You're a hero, yeah. man. You are, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're doing your bit. You're so, doing your bit. Yeah, no, it's, it's not much change for me during the week. The weekends, mm. like, I hate saying this because obviously, like, there's a lot going on, but it's just boring, isn't it? With, yeah, you mean boring as in working week the rat race and all that other business well more like the weekends like yesterday i finished work and i've got okay. a weekend off and i'm excited and then you go yeah. home it's like let's watch a film get a takeaway and today we've got up and we're like watch a film and get a takeaway <laughs> <laughs> well hope, hope, hopefully this changes it up a little bit for you hopefully this yeah yeah no nice. slice of something nice yeah no um, to be fair last night we had a we done like a quiz oh wicked, the missus family like big conference call big quiz oh, nice nice yeah. so what, what was that about what, what was your quiz done oh just like pub quiz general general knowledge random trivia random trivia i'm terrible i am so bad at pub quizzes we know what well, what's up robbie well. just just want to give a quick shout out to robbie how you doing yeah rob how you doing you good tell us yeah tell us about the pub quiz gone pub quiz you know what all we aim for is just not that wooden spoon we just don't want to come last so oh, yeah we can't we to be fair we don't I'm trying to think where we come I think it was about, it must have been about 10 people and we come about six. Mad, that's not, that's not too bad. It's not there, too bad. What was the prize draw? I mean, what do you win? What do you oh, win? Oh, nothing. Just, you know, just, just, just them, just them uh, boasting, boasting but, rights, I suppose. Bragging rights, yeah. Bragging yeah, yeah. rights, yeah, yeah. That's fair <laughs> enough. I mean, sometimes you kind of wish there's a better prize, like money or chocolate or food or like oh. a Nando's gift card. A Nando's right? gift card. Nando's gift card is good. Nando's gift card is I'm going to put that forward. Listen, I won a Nando's gift card once when I was at uh, a youth organization a couple of years back. And it was the best thing I ever won because it was £20 of a Nando's gift card. That's a meal. Like for me, sorted. Like calm. Yeah, I'm yeah. Good. That's a whole chicken. Whole chicken. <laughs> so for me. Nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I don't know if uh, you tuned in that much last night. Obviously, if you was busy, but we had Sam on here. Um, it was uh, I, was, I had a headphone in. I was listening. I Nice, nice. Um, and one of the questions I asked him, because uh, obviously you've got a lot more time on your hands nowadays, and that's one good thing about that is listening to music. Obviously, we love music. We're musicians. We do our thing. Is there any albums, music, playlists, anything that you've been listening to that you can recommend anyone for the lockdown? Uh, you know what? I've been going over a lot of older stuff. Yeah? I mean, uh, I don't know, I'll tell you lies. Like, two like, newish albums I've been listening to. Mm-hmm. Uh Straight from the Path released a new album at the end of last year. Yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah, uh, Internal Atomics, I think it's called. I think it's Internal Atomics. It's a wicked album. I've been smashing that, to be fair. More, I'm just like, obviously, but if you know, big fan of Craig Reynolds, so I love his drumming, so I've been checking that out. Um, plugging that merch as well, I can see there. Plugging no. the merch for the Downbeat podcast as well. <laughs> Go check <laughs> and, that uh, out, people. Go check that yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, I was going to get to that. I was going to get to podcasts. But yeah, so Straight from the Path. And I've got a bit of a... I suppose it's a guilty pleasure. I've been listening to a lot of work. There's an artist called Poppy. Okay. Okay. Don't tell know me. You know. It's like, no. how can I describe Poppy? It's like Meshuggah meets Taylor Swift. It's wow. like, wow. Really... What? <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly how it is. It's All right. like really poppy. And that's a name. It's like really pop music, but then just, it'll be like, and then out of nowhere, it's just, a, just like the most evil breakdown. It's really weird. It's like um, I tell what I put on par with. What's that? Uh, oh, baby metal. It's like baby metal sort of uh, thing. Okay, that sort okay. of vibe. I'm with you. I'm with you. So, yeah, Poppy. The album's called I Disagree. I think the album's called. Okay. And, uh, but, and you've, been, you've been enjoying it and recommend it to us. Yeah, definitely check it out. Definitely check it out. Definitely definitely check just, want check to, it out. just want to give a shout out to everyone live on Instagram as well. Hello, thanks for, <laughs> for joining. Um, yeah. So, any other any other recommendations? Uh, you know what I've been I've been smashing out just Jamie Lemon's whole back catalogue as well I forgot how good race car is race car backwards is the you, first Ruben Mountain yeah, yeah you, you 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 got a lot of love for that guy 
So. Yeah, everything he does. It's not. I don't think he's done anything I don't like. Even his last album was a whole album just covers, but... but that's really refreshing. Like when you get an artist that brings out everything you like, there's no compromises. Now yeah. that's quite a hard thing to achieve musically, I think. Anyway, like so, kudos for artists that can do that and have have done that and and kind of provide something for us to listen to without any compromise. That's a sick feature to have. Yeah, yeah. No, I, everything like race cars, race car backwards has come out early two thousands, I think, and then right up to listen to like shuffle, like say released. I'm like, I'm so shit with time. I think it was last year. Might have been the year before. But yeah, like everything. It's just so good. I, I, I can't recommend JB Lemon or Ruben enough, to be fair. Fair enough. You heard so, it here. You heard it from Billy. And then uh, I've been I've been listening to a lot of podcasts, really. Oh, nice. I've been using my chance to catch up. Like two podcasts I listen to, really, is the downbeat, obviously what I'm wearing now. Mm-hmm. That's just, it's, it was started off as a drum podcast, but then he interviews like tattoo artists and like Dan P. Carter. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, like the guitarist from Every Time I Die on there recently. So if you're into music or just, uh, to be fair, it's just it's a bit stupid. Okay. Just having a laugh. But that's good. That's uh, this casual. Yeah, that's yeah. Well, right. That's you want something chill. You don't want to always listen exactly. to something so serious. Yeah, yeah. And uh, also the Weekly Planet. <laughs> Probably week- my, it's my it's my geeky one. That is it's about what's like, that comic book movie. It's meant to be about comic book movies, but it's just like sick. That's it's sick. just like, it's good. It's just like two Aussie guys. It's just sort of take the piss really but talk about films and shit but that's they are it. funny i've got like i've got the missus watching and listening to it now as well like they oh. are they are funny like it's a good laugh like mr sunday movies on youtube he is just if you like stupidity like proper stupidity yeah mr. yeah sunday movies yeah we'll check it out you have to link check it, it after this yeah yeah it's, it's good laugh like yeah man no it's good uh have you like i don't know obviously you're the drummer you have you been playing any instruments lately have you been uh, I've been playing guitar. <laughs> All right, I'm, yeah, that's that's kind of cool. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, for anyone I'm, who doesn't know, before this band, Billy was a guitarist and still is a guitarist. Billy is a guitarist <clears throat> originally. He's his main instrument. And when we started up this outfit, I was too scared to get behind a drum kit. So <laughs> Billy naturally jumped behind it. But yeah, so you've been playing loads of guitar lately, yeah? Yeah, like I ain't got a drum kit at my house. It's in, it's in our studio locked up. So mm. there's just... What are you drinking? You've got a beer in like a sports. Oh, yeah, I've got an obscenely large cup. What it is, is, I don't actually like, as you know, I don't really like beer. It's normally rum or whiskey is my kind of forte. And I, um, you got me onto Shandies or Lager Tops and then I've turned them into Shandy. So I've got Lidl's own brand Stella with Lidl's <laughs> own brand lemonade. lemonade. And it's beautiful. It's lovely. It's cheap as chips and cheerful. To be fair, their own brand. Oh, what, what's what own brand is it? What's their knockoff? What's it knocking off? Oh, uh, Stella. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the Stella knockoff. I had that the other night. It's nice, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it's the, nice. knockoff, the knockoff Stella is nice. It's right. What oh, about mate, you? What you what you got going I'm, on? I'm on the old. Uh, I'm pretending it's summer. I'm I'm on the little summer berries rosé. <laughs> little <laughs> little hooking up the man then from Kate. Yeah, we need we need to get sponsored sponsor, by Lidl. Yeah, right. Straight. Let's see if we can get an endorsement. I can get some. Get so some. I, I can get Rosé. You can get their Stella knockoff. And then uh, with bacon. I also, their bacon as well. They're, they're fake knockoff goo cheesecakes. Goo uh, cheesecake. Oh. Knockoff goo cheesecake. Oh. is unreal. If you haven't had it, get yourself down to Lidl. And if you're a snob and you don't shop at Lidl, fuck off. <laughs> Go down to Lidl. Get some of this. But, it is, it's good stuff. I like Tidman. They called it a Lidl Landy. A Lidl. <laughs> <laughs> oh man no, no, Lidl's good mate yeah, yeah a little li- listen a little, yeah get a whole get a whole shopping trolley for you know half more than half yeah when i was when i was living here on my own i'd do like a week shop at about 12 quid yes, perfect <laughs> all I mean, in i don't want to don't want to ethically ask where they get their sources from oh, but yeah. i can't imagine it's that great i mean it might be i might be pleasantly surprised i'm gonna have to find out uh when did you what, what's what we said when, when did, did you, you... You become such hard drinkers. <laughs> it's one beer. I'm not a hard drinker. It's one beer. I mean, Billy's a hard drinker, definitely. I love. I love a glass of wine. Mm. I never used to be to before. Like I was. I've got a bottle of amaretto in the cupboard, but I've got a bottle. It's not. Nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, I think he's more mocking us. To be fair, Shandy the Rose. You oh. can't knock the wine, mate. To be fair, wine's dangerous. You know, you sink it back, and it's and it, it's not long before you realise you've done two bottles and you can't stand up. I'm straight up gonna say Shandy's dangerous as well. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you what, I was in, I went, I went Israel for a mate's wedding, and um, it was all there, like you know, men being men. I wasn't really a man being a man, but 
I we was all sitting there and I got a sh- I ordered a shandy, right? And this guy walked over and he, he's putting out the drinks off of the tray and he looks at the last drink and he's like, Shandy. And I'm like, <laughs> I put my hand, he was like, Man, like you drink shandy <laughs> in front of everyone, and everyone started laughing at me. And I was like, What do you mean a man like me drink shandy? Like, Look at you, you're man, you're big, you're hairy, man like you drink shandy. And then that whole day was it, was it? I couldn't, I wasn't allowed to drink shandy, and it was just fucking ruined it. But Shandy's a nice drink and it does get you battered. So uh, I don't know about Shandy. Like I love it. Like in the summer, I lager top, like Foster's stop or say, nice hot day out at the beer garden. A little bit of lemonade in the old Foster's, handsome. I don't like Shandy. It's too yeah. much lemonade. It's like it just tastes like gone off lemonade. <laughs> I think, you know what? I think it's maybe because I drink rum and coke or whiskey and coke. So I'm always getting something with something, and it's just that yeah. amalgamation. It tastes nice, you know, whatever. It just, I like it. You put me onto it. You're, it's your fault. <laughs> it he really does fault. like Shandy's. He's lying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Capri Sun filled with bootleg vodka. Wait, Capri Sun's on a one. So Tidman's commented Capri Sun's filled with bootleg vodka. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> that sounds wild. That sounds absolutely dreadful. Um, right. So, sorry. Got off on a bit of a side tangent. Is yeah, there any more record? Uh, so I actually asked you if you've been playing any instruments or writing anything lately. Obviously, you've been playing loads of guitar. I've just been... Since we've been in the band, I've been really bad at guitar. Like, I played, like, non-stop every night until mm. I got to about 17. I calmed down a little bit. And then uh, when I started this, I started playing drums. I just gave it up, really. It was only since I've moved in this place here now. Yeah. I started picking it up again. So I have... My, like, guitar level went like that. And I got to about 18. It's gone... <laughs> so Straight I'm just down. like... Yeah, I'm... Um, it's gone up and up and that's crap again. So I sort of, I feel like I'm relearning. Yeah, yeah. I feel, like I mean, I'm, I feel like I'm almost relearning at the moment. Is it a nice feeling though, like to be able to pick up a guitar and it'd be a new, like a, a kind of a semi new thing? Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 I get excited when I get a, like a, a song down again before now. Yeah. Like when I learn a new song, I get it down. I'm like, yeah, I've got that now. I've got that. Because I think it's, it's safe to say all of you were quite apt musicians when we started the band and obviously me and you having to change up our instruments and, and kind of go down that path. I don't really feel like I've gotten to the point of a guitar player as I was a bass player. I don't know if you feel the same about, have you gotten to the point of a drummer as you was a guitarist or? I don't know, actually. I mean, if, if someone asks me now, I still say guitar player. If someone says, oh, do you play an mm. instrument? I go, yeah, like, I, play, I play guitar since I was 12. I play guitar. Oh, and I play drums in a band. Yeah. But I yeah. say, no, I've not played... I'm probably a better drummer than I'm guitarist now, I'd wow. say. Yeah, and you're a pretty good drummer. Have you uh, have you thought about getting any uh, pads, any pads in? Yeah, no, I, now now I've now I've not been able to sit behind a kit on nothing since. Yeah, Jeez. It dreadful, man. Like it must be six six weeks now. Because when this first happened, we were like, we better we better not better chill. Yeah, it must right. Be four to right. six weeks. Yeah, so. yeah, because Aiden said about uh, so again, someone who Aiden lives with is uh, is is quite at high at risk. So Aiden had to say like he can't come. Yeah, and that was that was like two three weeks before this all kind of yeah you're right it really hit lock like lockdown and shit we was talking about not practicing so, yeah, so it's been I'm not I'm not I've not played drums in ages so now I'm waiting to be fair next week I've gone order just a little practice pad that I can come home slap in front of me just rudiments practice rudiments that's good man you did all all the rest of it just something like even if I just put a set of headphones in with a click and just spend half hour night. I've yeah, got to do, I've got to do something. Cause... Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's important. You got to keep up. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm not be sloppy. I've not been playing any guitar. Have you not? Or... I was going to say, have you? No. Literally, I played. Uh, I played some probably at the beginning of the lockdown, and then I've been helping out my parents like decorate and doing loads of stuff. So I've just haven't really had the time to sit down and actually s- with a guitar. But I need to start doing it. I I have been getting into songwriting, like lyric writing. Yeah, yeah. And I think Tidman, Tidman is going to be shooting over some demos and stuff, so I can kind of write some lyrics too. Yeah, he's but yeah, been busy. Tidman, he's been yeah, busy, yeah. Tidman, Tidman's been writing some good, really good riffs and like getting on with it. To be fair, which is good. At least one of us is. Um, <laughs> and obviously, I'm focusing on the content side of stuff, like all of this, all of this shit. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, all right, man. So listen, obviously, like we've just said, it's been like six weeks since we've been in a band. <laughs> is, is is there anything you miss most? Miss. You know about- what, like. God. Without being cheesy, I miss just us four being like mm-hmm. in a room together. I know it sounds cheesy. Yeah, you know, I, I said this last. I, said I this miss last you night. guys. I said this last like, night. I do, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about it? Do you miss like, like, explain no, it? Just, just like 
don't know, just fucking getting out and meeting all you boys and just having a having a laugh and fucking coming together and doing our thing. Like, I miss rehearsing just generally. Yeah. Like, I miss just finishing work on that Thursday nights and cracking on up to the studio, mm. setting everything up, going through whatever we're going through. Yeah. Just the band are like, I'm sure people have seen the day of the dirt. It's just a stupidity that that, <laughs> that I bring with me. <laughs> yeah, I, you know what? Like, I. Obviously, like again, I said this. I said this on the on the podcast with Tim, and obviously we went through all of our own personal journeys. Come out the other side better for it, and we yeah, started yeah. hitting it hard. Like we really yeah, was yeah. in that. We started doing so much, and for that catharsis, like element of going to a place, one, knowing that I had a, a place to go once a week, just to let all my shit out, leave it there. But also, like you say, the laugh, the banter. You know, yeah, like yeah. it got it gets dumb, it gets funny. Like you say, check out that day in the dirt. You will see sometimes how silly it can get. But just having that one point as a like touch ground with all of you, because actually, like as you get older, you don't see your mates as much because everyone's fucking busy. But we did see each other once. Yeah, yeah, at least for years now. For yeah, years. yeah. Like, yeah. So when something like that breaks, it is a break in your routine. You're like, fucking hell, like what's going on? It's a, uh, it's 100% an older feeling. Uh, what do you like? What are you looking forward to the most band wise? Like, rehearsing, gigging. What like what is it for you that you're that you're going to be looking forward to the most once this is all done? just getting in the room and making a ton of noise again like mm. just hanging out and fucking rehearsing like, obviously I'm, I'm buzzed to get back in it start releasing the stuff that we had planned and all, all the rest of it start doing all the stuff we had planned in the pipeline but just fucking rehearsing again yeah I'm, 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 go, on. No, go on go on I was gonna say I'm playing shows man I do I was looking forward to the shows oh like, yes yeah I was maybe yeah. going to a gig tomorrow oh man yeah I, that it's, it's such a bummer because like we had a, a, quite a good few shows lined up um and we was really rehearsing for them like getting like you like just to kind of give people an insight billy puts together and spends so much time on the set list and puts a performance together not just turning up and playing songs and fucking off um but really putting a performance together and you was putting ages of time into these things and making sure that we was at a level where when we yeah, played yeah. we felt and that and that show we played we got such a rush from it and we were so prepared to release that set you brought to yeah yeah to the to the, to the scene man it was a uh, it's quite devastating but i think yeah no it's looking forward to kind of getting back all that just getting back at it again yeah definitely um, definitely man seeing yeah. the scene again yeah i mean i'm hoping I'm hoping, I'm hoping, well, it, it depends. I, I mean, I hear there's talk that there won't be no live music until like next year. 2021. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Like spring 21, I've heard. It's like. <sighs> yeah, man. I, so I've got, I've got, we, we, we've got tickets to go see Rage Against the Machine at Reading. Yeah, man. Uh, I, I, I'm a huge fan. <clears throat> like, I'm a, you like, like we, yeah, are, yeah. we all are huge fans. Uh, yeah, yeah. But man, like if I if I don't get to see them guys, I want to be truly and like honestly fucking upset. Like I, that will that will fuck me up. I can see Reading being cancelled. I really can. You know what? Like it probably is. I'm just telling myself it's not. Um, but it's it's we got to just see. Like if if people play by the rules and we see what's going on, maybe I I don't know. It's it's hard to call at this moment. Like no one knows what's going on, man. Like yeah, honestly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Like. Yeah, it, it, I mean, if, like, even if like we start getting over it, and then Reading turns up, and then two hundred thousand people turn up there, and one person's got it, that's it. It's like yeah. another fucking quarter of a million people nearly that's yeah, getting yeah. up with it. Like, yeah, yeah. And then you can't just... you can't um, account for who, who how many people are vulnerable and and the rest of it. And that's it. yeah, it's um, that's it. it's a big thing to call. I mean, it's affected big bands, small bands everyone this thing is yeah, really, yeah. Really, really affected bands and just want to give a shout out to all the bands that we know and 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 uh, that maybe might tune in like just you know our thoughts are with you guys because it is tough it is really tough it's tough for the industry um and hopefully we can bounce back from it man like hopefully we can we can really bounce back i know it's affected us massively with the content with our with our ep that we're trying to release with everything else that comes with that um yeah so it's, it's really hard to kind of balance it all because it's so you forget how much you actually need to all be together to do this stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's it's affected everything. Like you think, like I mean, there's musicians that make their money from this stuff. Like businesses are going out. It's fucking everything up. Like big time. It's a shit time. It's a shit time. You think about bands that have had like tours booked. Obviously, at, like Tidman's, like the shit yeah. we had booked. Yeah, you know man. What I mean, rough. That shit's rough. But um, I don't know. I mean, like. 
obviously with all this going on like what have you been doing like to keep yourself busy like during the lockdown is there any i don't know activities exercises what are you yeah how you how you keeping yourself busy i mean obviously you're working i know that i'm lucky i'm i'm almost lucky to say i'm still working yeah in that i know monday to friday i've still got a routine i'm still able to to earn i mean i suppose if you're being fertilized you get paid but still got that chance to earn money Mm -hmm. being at work but then the weekends come around it's just like to be fair like since this happened i've moved the whole flat about (laughs) i've like reorganized the flat Mm -hmm. we've painted the bedroom oh wow okay like, what, what colours did you go for? Just just white, like, just cleaned just like, it all no. up. Yeah. Just little things, like, like we've gone on a walk today. Yes. Uh, like, we, we'll go shopping on a Saturday, something to do. Watched How, a lot of films. Oh, okay. Been watching, um, go on, what films are we watching? Disney Plus. Oh, so I've, shit, I've restarted, yeah. uh, I've restarted the Marvel MCU back, chronological order. Is And that's all on Disney Plus? Because I, I have... everything. I, I have not gotten through all of that stuff yet. I've, I've oh, not. You I need, need to. to check it out. I need to the, check the, it only, out. the only one that's not on there is the the Spider Man films aren't on there. Ah, so literally my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, I'll still check them out. I've seen all the Spider Man's. Do anyway. it, man. Do it. Yeah. Watch them all in order. Like, go online and just get the list of how. Because they all come out in a different order. Oh, so fuck like, that. Why don't you just get a list together for me? Tell me what to do. I'll, I'll send you the I'll, list. I'll watch over. the motherfuckers. Yeah. Let's start with like Captain America one it's like world war Two, and then marvel captain marvel's in the 90s and you work your way through them right mm-hmm. until like you'll get to um end game okay and then by the time you get to end game you're like you'll piss your pants at the end all right like, honestly yeah. it's, okay. it's the I'll, best I'll, thing in the world i'll give it i'll give it a little hit up i'll watch it yeah. uh, you give me the list and i'll give it a hit up just want to give a shout out to everyone that's joined give a massive shout out to loot and lives for getting involved just think about you guys man hopefully the hit isn't too bad and um, you guys are managing to to kind of get bookings ready for when this stuff's over. Um, and another shout out to Aiden. Yeah, he's uh, confirming Billy's watching the the Marvel films in order. And I shall, <laughs> I shall do. Aiden, uh, I, I needed you earlier. They was mocking me for drinking wine. I wasn't mocking no one. But you was a mocking. Robbie and Sam were mocking. But yeah, listen. Uh, so that's. That's how you've been how you've been keeping busy. I mean, it's a good way of keeping busy, like making sure that you're you're either just doing stuff that you kind of enjoy. Um, have you got any advice for anyone that is like in lockdown? How, how... <sighs> you know, I would I'd say like I mean I'm at work. I'd say stay in a routine. I'd be mm. saying to like my missus, like you've got to try staying in some routine. In that like right. you still set an alarm, even though you're not gonna be out. Set an right. alarm. Mm-hmm. If it's for like nine o'clock set an alarm and get up for your day yeah yeah and like I, I do think as well like if you're locked in at home it's such a good time to just get a hobby or to start mm-hmm. doing something mm-hmm. knowing people all the time like you probably get it when you say oh like, i play guitar and someone goes oh i wish i play guitar yeah like yeah. jesus now's your time man mm-hmm. just go buy a guitar and fucking learn like i think if i had uh if i had all this time off if i weren't at work i think i would have like probably ordered a little electric drum kit or ordered a fucking even a piano a lot of piano but like a keyboard or something yeah, to fucking yeah. give myself something to do mm-hmm. get a hobby fucking all just keep yourself busy yeah i mean it's like i've all right so i've i've, I've set an alarm eight, eight in the morning every morning my routine i get up i i'll have breakfast or something very small i'll do either a, a hit workout or a cardio workout um just to kind of get me moving um and then I'll kind of do some other sort of activity, whether it's read a book or do some decorating or do some organising. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe, and then involve myself in entertainment, whether it's games or videos or whatever it may be. And then I don't know, like just try and get creative, however, however it may need to be. But I do think it's important, especially nowadays, like whilst everything's going on, just to give yourself some sort of time, whether it's um, I don't know, working out or reading a book. Just give yourself some sort of time, and also if you can make sure that you're calling people i know that you've been calling me periodically every now and then give me a little facetime chatting yeah, together. yeah. really important that you do that man because you're you know otherwise some people might not be having that kind of contact yeah especially, yeah, definitely. especially your mates you don't know you know um yeah like i've facetime i've been facetiming my mum every night bless her i've not seen yeah. her in like fucking three four probably longer than that like four weeks now so mad, isn't it? So, like i've been facetiming mum every night I, I like text all my mates like even just every now and again like house things like mm. everyone like individually i just text every now and again like are you good even if they've got nothing exciting to say i've got nothing so nothing to fail nothing's fucking happening like there's nothing to catch yeah. up on fuck all's happening but 
Yeah, man, just make sure everyone's okay. Like, because everyone, you know what, like, it's going to get political now, but everyone always puts up on their Facebook and Insta, like, I'm here for you, when times yeah. are shit, I'm here for you. But how many people are actually there to fucking just send that message, like, you good, of course, what's up? You- Listen, people, people just like, ah, uh, I don't know, man. It's, it's so, so fast paced. People don't fucking spend that time anymore because it is yeah, it's yeah. like, you don't, you know, so no, it's, it is important. And that, I mean, I think I've, I've tried to put myself out there. Um, I've always tried to put myself out there. I, I think for people around me to be like, look, I'm here, even if it is just for a little chin whack. I mean, like you say, you do it often. We do it quite yeah, a lot. Yeah. yeah. It's important, man. It's really, really yeah, important. Yeah. It's all, like, I've, I've got quite a busy life. Like without going into mm-hmm. it all, like, I've got a lot of shit going on all the time, work, personal life family all the rest of it and i know sometimes i slack with sending that message but sometimes i do fucking sit down and go jesus like i better i better text everyone and i will just send the message out and like, make sure everyone's good yeah man, check out some people especially calls as well like i fucking call you in the week call Aiden in the week yeah, yeah. The, like you know what i mean yeah, yeah. i mean it's, it's like again <clears throat> it's just really important just five ten minutes of your time to give to someone else if you can obviously if you can't and you're and you need to kind of reserve that energy because you know you might might have anxiety you might have a lot of things going on it's fine but if you can to pick up that phone five ten minutes to someone else will yeah. just really go a really long way i mean i know my brothers are doing it with my folks down here like they're really really getting on you know yeah. just facetime with my mum and she's loving it and my dad's really loving it as well it's really cool um and important but yeah so it's crazy man i just you know what i like it's I'm, I'm sitting here now and I'm kind of getting less lost in conversation with you, but it's actually yeah. mad what's going on. Like what is happening and everything that's happened, like currently going yeah. on with the pandemic. It's nuts. It is nuts. No, it's, it's a weird, it's a weird time. Like you hear on like people talking about this online and shit, like nothing's happened like this since World War Two. It's fucking nuts. insane. It's, just, it's a nuts time. Like, so there's a lot of people that are stressed and got nothing to do. I think yeah, I always mate. worry about, is what I don't worry about, but I think I think about like, see, like, this is like, I was living here on my own until, recently really mm-hmm. and i think imagine if i had not had work and i was in here on your own and i, and I didn't my missus hadn't moved in like mm. it'd be fucking well dull like not even yeah. dull it'd be depressing just sitting yeah. here on my own all day every day seven days a week like it would be yeah i think it would be super tough super super that's tough hard. like it's people that like i've been lucky my girlfriend moved in literally just before mm. lockdown probably really yeah like and there's it's, people that ain't seeing now other half so like four mm. weeks five weeks six weeks whatever it's been yeah it's tough it's that yeah that that aspect of it is tough just yeah and it, i mean if anyone anyone who listens to this on youtube or or is, or is locked in now just you know if you need to even if it's just a chat just message us one of us will get back to you we'll have a chat we'll we'll get involved in some way and um we'll try and try and keep that keep that shit at bay but yeah i mean on a on a let's try and change the subject on a bit more of a on a positive note um some people want to get away from all of this stuff um yeah yeah and maybe that's why they're locked in here so i know from experience that you're a fucking animal when it comes to live shows you've done some crazy crazy shit um i mean i remember seeing milk teeth at barfly i think it was still barfly then and you done a i want to say a, i can't remember if it was a flip or a jump straight into the crowd and it was nuts and then the cameraman jumped in and started filming you along the way now some people who see you might not expect that shit some people who come to our shows might expect that shit it's all dependent but yeah. where 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 what show do you think you've gone to and you've seen someone go absolutely nuts or it's been in a crazy environment and you think fucking hell like this is oh. this is the peak I don't know i mean you know what recently I keep bringing them up. I'm still a bit like a bit stalkerish now, but we went. I took my missus to see straight from the path mm-hmm. at the end of last year, and uh, it's like she's she's never gone to like a metal or punk or anything, your hardcore show before, anything like yeah. that. So I said like we'll go, we'll uh, like we'll stand by the bar, we'll get some drinks, have mm-hmm. a couple of glasses of wine, watch the fans <laughs> and that. Yeah, and uh, we watched the first. I think it might be Devil Wears Prada, you know. She's nice. like, yeah, I enjoyed this, nice. And then I was like, straight from the path, we will get a little bit more of fun, with some drinks here. Got in the front. I was like adamant. I'm like, nah. I'm like, I'm sitting here. I'll sit with you, stand with you. And as soon as they come on, like, I don't even think the whole band had actually walked out. I just charged in, like, charged <laughs> in. Honestly, next time you see the missus, ask if you're... T- I literally started, like, the fucking pit there. And uh, just fucking jumping up. She's got a video of me, like, jumping up, crowd surfing. Mm. And uh, that was nuts. Like, that was... Um, I think they broke the record that night at the O2 Islington for the most crowd surf. Right, yeah, they did. I saw it on their yeah, stories. Yeah. I did see it on their so, stories. Yeah. Well, do you remember roughly off the top of your head how many it was? Oh, I don't know the number. I mean, I, I must have gone up four times. 
more than that apparently like more, I fucking I, I mean, they're probably one of my favourite bands to be fair so um, another show Aiden's listening I went I'm sure it's Aiden come with me to see Terror at the Underworld is it with Jack as well I don't know I, don't, I can't remember it might just be me and Aid you know yeah Jack might have been there I think I've seen Terror with Jack but I think it was a different time with Jack and it was just absolute like carnage yeah, chaos so like, Aiden's popping up in the chat look brutal it was actually fucking carnage. Mm. There you go. It was just me and Aiden. Yeah. It, honestly, like it was, it was insane. What went like, down? Even, what happened? Oh, it was just at all times there was not at any point once they started when there was not at least three people crowd surfing and at least four people on the stage and like there was just fists and kicks, fly kicks. It was nuts, man. Terror, we keep terror so good live. But yeah, that was that's pretty. Yeah, that's got to be up there. One of the. I mean, I, 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 another gig that always stays with me, but for the wrong reasons, was Desolated. Okay. I saw Desolated as big into like the beatdown that's like seen at the time, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, we saw them, and that was just out of hand. That was just like pure violence. Like, oh. I'm all up for like, I'm well up for fly kicks and all the rest of it, like the stupidity. Mm-hmm. Wow. But like at Desolated was too much. That was with Jack. Was that just? Is that is that? Just was people that... just out to hurt, like dickheads just out to hurt people. And I don't want to. I, I don't want to. I don't want to. Um, kind of uh, uh, pigeonhole demographic. Was it just toxic men being toxic men? Because sometimes uh, yeah, yeah, it yeah. fucking happens. And it, yeah, it, yeah. It, no, it was definitely it like fucks me off so much when I go yeah, to shows. Yeah, yeah. I just hate it. Big roided up guys, like yeah, 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 trying to trying to flex. <laughs> what what is that about, man? Like, because obviously you've gone to a lot more 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 shows like that than I have. Like, what is what is that about? I don't know, mate. It's just people like it, like when you go to a show, like you you can't. You can't explain like your mosh pit. I'm not talking about when everyone gets excited and they're pushing each other. I'm talking about like your yeah. proper mosh pits. You can't explain it. It's just like your chance to go out and just fucking release like. But when you get them guys there, like they're yeah. just they're just there to make themselves feel good about themselves, I suppose. Because I was gonna say like <laughs> they're, 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 right. So there's a thing there, right? Because you know, we play shows and man, we fucking let loose. Like yeah, I know yeah. I, I like I know I do sometimes and. I ain't trying to prove myself to no one and I ain't hurting anyone in that process. I fucking hope I'm not yeah, hurting yeah, no, in that process. If I have any hurt anyone, it's a completely complete accident. And I think the only people I have hurt by accident is the band. Again, <laughs> by accident. But no one in the crowd because there's no fucking need for it. And if that was to ever happen at our shows, I think, obviously, things do get angry, things do get moshy at our shows. But if that was to ever fucking happen, man, that's disgusting. You would fucking call in telling people to fucking leave. But when you go to these bigger shows, it's like some people are covered by that crowd or they think you can get away with it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But I, I have seen it more at, at harder, hard, well, harder, hard call shows or harder shows. Yeah, I mean, it's a, <clears throat> it's a weird thing. All right, so I mean, hard question now, really hard question. What is the best show you've been to? Oh wow! I'll, I'll let you have. Wow. I'll, I'll let you. Ha- if it's that difficult, I'll let you have two of the best shows you've been to. Who are they? Wow. Why were wow. they? Why were they the best? And you know, what was unique about that set? Oh, I know you're a set I guy. Think, I know you're a set guy. I think set wise and as a live performance, I'd say I've seen Muse seven times. Fuck. And I'd have to say one of them are probably Muse. Muse at Wembley Stadium, not oh, 2006 my. when it was Harp. There was another one. I didn't go to Harp. I'd only been at 11 then, but I went to another one when it was about 14, 15 at Wembley Stadium. And mm. uh, I, I bunked off school. Oh, wait, me and my naughty, mate, naughty, naughty. naughty. I don't advise it. Stay at school. It's my only day. I, 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 only day I didn't have at school. To be fair. Fuck school, man. School is not a good thing. But, but go on, carry. On. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's, a, that's another conversation. But yeah, no, we bunked off. We was I was outside Wembley Stadium at about eleven a.m. I said, and the doors are about five p.m. And I just queued for fucking hours. We took a kebab with us at eleven a.m. And a load of fucking soft drinks because we'd have been 14, 15. Yeah. And we sat outside and we queued and we waited hours in the sun to get right at the front. I was literally on the barrier at the front of Wembley Stadium. And like, it's just, it was insane. Like, it was just, it's Muse. And it was especially at that time, it was like in their, it was in their prime. I'm sure it would have been around, around the time they released Resistance. There is, if you like Muse yeah. fan, and Resistance album. Yeah. And that's when they was in their prime. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like they sort of I love views but they sort of started I mean I feel like they've dropped off the last over the last decade really they've started dropping off yeah, yeah, yeah but like that was insane just everything about it like 
it's like the sort of set that you dream of putting together like the mm. whole show everything there you go Tim says he's 09 so oh, I would have been I would have been 14 fuck. that's fucking incredible incredible but, I mean, they know how to put on a fucking show oh yeah the best live band yeah. in the world 100% yeah, I've, I've seen it I've seen them and they like I was sober when I saw them. I didn't take or drink anything and I left and I was, I felt something. I was, I wasn't the same. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's something else, man. It's something else. Tim had just said with 2010, actually, I think 2010 might have been Emirates stadium. If I remember rightly. Didn't, did you go see them electric ballroom on my trip? Yeah, no, that did happen as well. That was like when it was massive, they released radio one on a Friday about midday. They were like, we're playing a show at the Electric Ballroom, Thousand Cap. And like, I've seen them, the smallest show before that, we think, was the O2 Arena, mm-hmm, which mm-hmm. is like 20,000 people. And I remember finishing work. This, it must have been when I was 16 then, because I've only been at work, 16, 17. I got home, got changed. I just went straight back out to Electric Ballroom. I got like the last, I was in like the last hundred of tickets. Yeah, and I saw them play the Electric Ballroom, which is fucking nuts, because they've not played a venue that small since early days like i say i've seen them at download festival uh emirates stadium wembley stadium wembley arena o2 arena like they're like mega places so yeah the list goes on yeah, see yeah. them at electric ballroom at a thousand cap was just insane but, was it what right so could they pull it off like yeah yeah oh yeah, yeah, yeah definitely yeah. yeah big time big time yeah. they played a good set for it as well mm-hmm. they played like the right set like you've got like mm-hmm. the songs that i don't know like like feeling good or something like that. That's a stadium. That's like everyone singing yeah. back at the stadium. But at Electric Ballroom, it was just like the fast paced, big yeah. drop D riffs. So. Yeah, man. And that's and that's the thing. Like, like you hear bands say, like they've gone from big to small, and it sometimes uh, it can be hard to translate that. But it's cool when a, a big band can do it because it kind of shows. Like, actually, I think I saw Matt Bellamy say, like, I think I wrote uh, read an article that come out about that show, and I think he was like, it was so fucking cool to hear hear people he's saying like it was so cool to hear yeah, people yeah. chat and he said he missed that and i was like that's fucking sick like that's a really cool thing um yeah, yeah. Is there any other artists that you know yeah. you've gone to and you thought fucking hell this is nuts this is like uh, I, I, I don't know if it's one of the best show, probably because it's not the best time i've seen the band but the first time i saw every time i die i read in 2012 yeah, yeah. i was i was into like you sort of just you're more hardcore at the time so like mm-hmm. your terrors uh, knuckle dust from the uk Shit like that. Um, Wolf Down. Mm-hmm. Just that straight up, like, hardcore, that straight edge shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And someone's like, oh, I've heard this every time I die playing. And it would have been the lockdown stage, I think. And it was like, okay. they're, they're hardcore so let's go. And uh, they're what I, every time I die is what I call proper metalcore. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jesus, man, that shit changed my life. Like Without yeah. sounding cheesy. It's hard to talk about music for myself, I think, without sounding cheesy. Well, don't worry about sounding cheesy. But, like, like, say yeah, it. Like, Tell it as yeah, it is. Yeah, that show fucking changed my life. Like, In what way? Honestly, In what aspect? Just that like, I found this new band. And mm-hmm. since then, like, like Muse, Muse have always been my favourite band. Until then, it was the only band I thought, these are as good as Muse. Like. Mm-hmm. And like, I, I literally, like, obviously, if you can see it, the boys that are probably watching this know, like, I've got lyrics from the one song, the main song I remember from that show, tattooed on me after that. Because mm. it's just like, shit, like, that was fucking, I've never seen a band like that. Like, they were nuts live, it was just constant heavy wrist breakdowns, they were just fucking trashing the play, it was just fucking quality. And that's yeah. like, through them I found, like, Chariot, Dillinger Escape Plan, and shit like that. And then, yeah, big time, like. Who, so, I mean, like, like going, going back to that time of your life, like, who, who was doing shit that was unique and different out of all of that or was it all unique and different like what what you know what about that specifically and what what artists were doing that unique different shit what do you mean what in like the hardcore scene or like yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> looking back now i've listened to it a lot of it's quite samey but i just mm. i would just love like fucking throwing down really like mm. <laughs> going to these shows i wanted breakdowns crowd surfings mm. i say like no, a lot of it's a bit the same and the same i feel a bit offensive to the artist saying that but it's like it's very regiment. That's all. Is it cultured? Is it is it a culture? Yeah, yeah. Is it, is it, is it a culture? Time, yeah. Hardcore yeah. music is a culture as well. Like. Right. So, and I think I think that is that's an important aspect of music. Like, yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's to also acknowledge like a scene is a culture. You don't just tarnish it like oh, you know, like you say, you don't mean it's all the same, but it is a culture, and that you got to kind of stick to that elements of it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Even like even when Mrs. Come with me to see Straight from the Path last year, like. Mm. We've got chatting to so many people, friendly people and all that. 
And she was like, like everyone here is really friendly. Like, I hear this music and you expect everyone to be an arsehole, really. So everyone to be like big, scary punk dudes. But they're not like, and I was going to all these shows at the time with, uh, when I'm like, you know, Charlie, Charlie Richardson, it's yeah. me and him. Yeah, like, yeah. We went to, we went to all the hardcore shows. If there was a hardcore band at Camden Underworld, like we were there. Yeah. And like, we started meeting people that we like, we'd see from other shows and we'd say hello and like, just everyone was friendly, man. Like mm. you could like, I always remember seeing uh, Brutality Will Prevail. Okay. And some dude like, not on purpose, like fully swung his leg around, kicked me in the face and popped my nose. Oh, shit. But like, he straight away, like, it sounds stupid, he's kicked me in the face and like, nearly enough broke my nose, but he like, picks me up. He's like, you good, man? I'm like, I'm good. And when Brutality finished, we're chatting about it and like, it's just such a fucking, like you say, like a, cu- like a culture, yeah. Like, yeah, of course, of course. Where everyone is, it's like, there's love. And I think, like, towards, like, when I speak about Desolated show earlier, like, beatdown started becoming the thing. Mm-hmm. And that's when I started to, uh, that's when I started losing, like, this sort of culture started to change towards just this more violence than anything. Well, like, yeah. I was well happy to throw down, but I weren't out to hurt people, yeah, like no, you were talking about earlier. So Yeah, it's, it's not cool, man. It's, it's, <clears throat> it's not, there's no, there's no fucking space for it. And I think, like, going back to the whole culture side of things as well, when you're, when you're an outsider looking in, it's hard to sometimes understand, respect and see a culture. I think, you know, I've had so many people either say to me like family or friends that maybe not listen to our music, but like, you know, it's, Oh, you guys are so angry. Like you're always angry. Do you ever write good or happy songs? And it's like, well, hold on. Like, and it's, it's a hard thing to explain because I don't sometimes feel angry when we're playing all of our songs. Sometimes I feel a lift or a buzz and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah this is like something we're saying and it's cool, but it's not always angry. And I think, it's hard to kind of maybe see that culture. Obviously, you're seeing quite violent, aggressive body movements and stuff, especially with the, maybe the hardcore scene as you're talking. Yeah, but at yeah. the same time, like that amount of care. I mean, <clears throat> I can safely say I've been to hardcore shows, punk shows, hardcore punk shows. And if it's a good one, no one hits the fucking floor normally. Yeah, no yeah. The fucking, people are so apologetic. People are so like looking out for each other. And it's always kind of been a good environment in, in, in my perspective. But, you know... <clears throat> And like I say, it's just it's just looking into that culture and making sure that you know you you're looking with a with an open pair of eyes instead of a shut pair of eyes. Um, yeah, yeah. Again, like <clears throat> just another 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 kind of side question is to be like, obviously, our sound is obviously influenced by all four of us and how we do things. What artist or band or drummer kind of do you will take most influence from and implement into our sound? Because maybe me and Tid, like we said yeah, the other day, with me and Tidman kind of coming from a classic punk sound but you're you and aiden are more hardcore punk sound yeah yeah i was listening to that yeah <clears throat> so, that's what i put in the chat at that time when you talked to him about that last night <laughs> like every time i die that's where my like after like, that's what i say when i say it changed my life like i started listening to them in 2012 mm-hmm. like that's like i was like not that i want to be that band but i want to well that sort of that vibe is that you know what i mean like not yeah. saying lot not sound like them but have that vibe like and like the drummers they've had since i've seen them if they've gone for like legs and they had daniel davidson and now uh, i can't remember the latest guy's name but like they've got all these drummers and they've always been so good and i love their style in these music in like it's not like hardcore but like it's, a, it's got them elements of it and i've just always appreciated their style and i like to think that's what i try and bring is how how i see that band but i fucking love them <laughs> let's get talk highly about that band enough <laughs> carry on man you do it yeah, yeah, and I, I think you listen to it, like you say, you can't say it better, like, when people say, what music is your band? I'm like, punky? And I don't know where to put it, because, like, I'm not saying that we broke the boundaries, but you can mm. really hear, like, sometimes you're hearing something, I'm like, I'm hearing, like, an Idols vibe, and that'll come from you, and then I hear, like, a riff, and it would be like, oh, that's a bit, like, Queensy, Queens of Stone Age, like, mm-hmm. I know that's, and then like, I hear, like, a bit of a fucking funky bass line, so I'm like, that's Aiden's thing, and then, like, you hear like a breakdown or something like that. That's like that's me and Aiden, like. Yeah, I mean nine <laughs> nine times out of ten, if if you're hearing a breakdown in our tunes, especially the live stuff, Billy would always try and incorporate it. <clears throat> and I think at the very beginning, I was shut off from it so much because it was just so new to me. But now, it it is it, it it's informed our sound so much. So yeah, much. yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. You can you can hear like. You can hear the punk roots, but then that that hardcore background, like very much so, like you say, you and Tidman, like the classic punk, like fucking the Clash or whatever fucking stuff you listen to, and I, I appreciate that because I wouldn't have the music I had I have now without them bands. Obviously, Black Flag, I like Anti Flag, that sort of shit that sort of led up until bands I'm listening to now, like say the Chariot Live, 
if you've ever seen that band live, even watch our video, that's the live show I want to bring. Mm-hmm. But then I have, I want the performance element of Muse, but then I want like that sound vibe from like every time I die. Mm-hmm. So that's what I try to bring, if you know what I mean, if you're yeah. with me. Yeah, no, I'm definitely with you. I mean, it's it's interesting, again, like when we're, I, I would say out of all four of us, when we rehearse, you're 95% exactly the same mm. live. Like, you know, you're always bringing it. You're such high energy. You're so aggressive. You're so, that that formula you bring adds adds so much dynamic to, to, to us as a sound. And I think when we play live, I mean, you've done some fucking crazy shit <clears throat> live. And I think, again, it's, it's, breeding a new culture it allows people especially the younger generations to have to look at i think you know what fucking hell like this is new this is different and it it starts at a grassroots le- grassroots level and i think it's so important that each and everyone within within um the scene does that i mean we've got a few more guests that are going to be coming on on the show and they've all brought their own different thing and again just want to give top props to you for like actually opening up the up my eyes massively to how a drummer is and it can be but more importantly is there times where we're sitting down and we're playing and we're writing or whatever it is and that you kind of think um that these guitar parts would either sound better with a certain drum part or maybe could potentially compromise like where where's your let me rephrase that where's your balance to how far you will go with the hardcore or how much you would stay with the classical side of the drumming um Oh, that's our question, you know. Like, I, I, I don't want to completely change the sound of the band. I just want to sort of put my bit towards it, and I try and be as, I try and be as like all the bands I listen to, like say like Craig Reynolds and they're like Legs or Every Time I Die, like these these drummers mm-hmm. are in like Connor Dennis of Beartooth, shit like that. Them drummers are insanely technical, and I can't keep up with that. So I try to mm-hmm. do as much as I can with that, but still fit in like this classic sort of punky vibe that you and Tidman bring really mm-hmm. obviously we've not we don't we don't play the riffs like every time i die I do we're mm-hmm. quite sort of power chords and mm-hmm. not not like i don't want to insult the music because no you're fucking, not you're not you're you know not. what i mean you know what i mean we're sort of like I don't, we lean towards that old school punk whereas the stuff i listen to is very fucking even the guitar riffs are constantly changing strange fucking notes and mm-hmm. you know all the rest of it like you can hear like listen to an every time i die song like the riffs are insane and the drums are following that. So I try and follow our music and try and put what I can technically into it, but still trying to, still trying to keep your classic punk side of it. Classic. If you know uh, yeah, I think it's just trying to get that fine balance. In. Yeah, it's definitely trying to get that balance between me and Aiden trying to play this technical hardcore and you and Tidman trying to play this classic, simple, am I allowed to say the word simple punk? Yeah, you can say whatever in, you want. In that, in that, yeah, yeah, in that way that, like, I don't know, like, I mean, like, say, like, Joe Strummer. Like, yeah. the guy's a quality songwriter, but he was yeah. just playing chords, like. Yeah, you know I what guess. I mean? You know yeah, what I'm guess. saying? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, like, I fucking love Joe Strummer. I think some of the shit he's come out with is amazing musically. Uh, I think lyrically is where he's strong, like, strongly yeah, at. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. Very, like, guy's intelligent. Guy was intelligent, do you know what I mean? Like, so, so intelligent. Um, but again, musically, I think it's it's cool to see again, like not so if people do think punk is a, is a one shape or a one sound, like it's cool to show to show people that no, it's not. And, and you know, you provide that that kind of space. Listen, look, I'm, I'm very aware of the time um, and I'm just going to just suggest maybe we can wrap it up quite shortly. Um, yeah, but just just one last last question for you. Um, do you have any kind of tips, tricks or advice for anyone just to get through the day? Just to get just through, to get the, through day. the day. Yeah. Wait, lockdown. Lockdown right now. Maybe not in lockdown. Just any any day. But yeah, mainly mainly because of the lockdown. Uh, geez, man, just look after yourself. Try to keep to routines. Mm-hmm. Make sure you're eating properly. Make mm-hmm. sure you're still getting out and seeing the sunshine. It's mm-hmm. nice weather at the moment. Mm-hmm. Obviously, don't be out socialising like mm-hmm. you shouldn't be. But get out, do your walks, bit of exercise. Mm-hmm. Just try to keep yourself in some kind of like normal life. You don't just it's easy, like, but especially like on the weekends now. Like, I spent last weekend. I said I felt like a stoner. I was sitting on the sofa, like, mm-hmm. just a ton of food on me, just monging out eating food, like. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, that's, that's no good, like. I'm, so like this weekend, I say we've got up, put a shelf up. I've put a mirror up. Mm-hmm. We've gone on a walk to the shops. We've walked mm-hmm. back, watched mm-hmm. a bit of TV. Now I'm sitting here doing this. Probably watch another film. 
just started American Pie. Nice. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll finish that off. We'll probably see the last of this bottle of wine off. No, I do not. I don't, don't start day drinking stuff. That's not good. Yeah, be but, careful um, that shit, man. Be careful. That, that is that dangerous. Shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's That's easier now. You've got to look after yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's dangerous. So just look after yourself, man. Just keep checking on everyone else. Mm-hmm. Listen to a lot of music. Check out Diamond or Dirt. <laughs> yeah, man. Look, shamelessly plug. Listen, we've got a new single. Yeah, yeah. Please don't spit in my mouth. It was uh, Mixer Master by Steph Carter um, from Lioness. Check Lioness out. They've got some fucking banging yeah, tunes. Definitely. Um, and right. So I think that's a perfect way to end the show. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Billy Fuller, for joining me on a lockdown podcast. Thank you for having me, my no good worries. friend. No it's nice to catch up with you. It's nice yes, to yes. Chill, <laughs> it's nice to have a chat. Yeah, listen, man. Um, listen to everyone who's locked in live and also listening on youtube thank you very much and hopefully we'll be back soon with another podcast and a new guest take care and see you later bye ciao bella